Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Draw With Tea. As I promised in the last episode, we will be, in this episode, going through the digital portrait of Baldrick. So if you missed the last episode, Baldrick is the main villain of my story, Kalismir. It's a fantasy story, if you don't know. And um, he's basically a, a duke, or, you know, the heir, to, he's going to be the heir of the dukedom. And he's not happy with that. He wants to be the king, so, you know, he... He basically at, you know, make a long story short because it's a very long story um, and it's not even part of the story, it's a pre-story. He basically um, finally snaps and he's like, I should be king and he tries to assassinate the real king, which gets him in trouble because he of course fails. He gets exiled, but he finds a magic crown from the original empire that Kalasmir descends from which is the uh, crown of the Lich King, which, as the name implies, gives him the power of um, the one and only Lich King in the Kalismir lore, which was Pylair. And Pylair was so powerful, he invented necromancy, and that was basically the fall of Acanthia because he kept raising the dead and went on a whole thing of conquest. You know, like, humans are better than everybody, so we're just gonna enslave everyone, and anybody who disagrees with me, well, I'll... I'll, I'll kill you and raise you again, and then you'll do my bidding. And, uh, yeah, so he's uh, quite a villain, um, controlled by an even worse villain. And um, here you can see I'm actually drawing the uh, crown of the Lich King, which is kind of an important bit of uh, Kalismir lore. And it's made out of bones, and it's fused to Baldric's skull, so he can't actually take it off. If he could take it off, he would be free of Pylair, which is kind of a goal of his, because even though... Pi Lair's power is the only thing that's really allowing him to uh, rule Kalismir without anybody taking him out. Um, the more magic he uses, the more of his own humanity he loses. So eventually, if he keeps using that power, Pi Lair will be able to fully possess his body and then Baldric will be no more. So it's a... There's a, an interplay of Baldric against the heroes, and also Baldric versus Pylair, these sort of two villains with nearly similar goals, but not quite. And they're kind of having a power struggle between them, where Pylair is biding his time and, and goading Baldric to use his power, and Baldric has to use that power, but it's continuously costing him, and um, he's desperately trying to find a way to free himself of, um, of Pylair. And uh, that is uh, a kind of a part, a big part of the story. And it does kind of overcomplicate things, maybe a bit, or rather complicate them. I don't know if it overcomplicates them, but uh, it definitely gives um, Baldric uh, a, a foe where, while the heroes are kind of not really close by, and it also ties up Baldric from just you know, using his power to, to go and quash the heroes before uh, before they even do anything. Because where the story starts, they're, they're out quite far from Kalismir, but Baldric is aware um, of where they are, and it's partially his goal to uh, to deal with them, because uh, he needs to kidnap Princess Yzette to free himself from Pylair, or that's rather what Pylair tells him. And... Um, course he doesn't quite trust Pylair because Pylair tricked him into putting the crown on to begin with so yeah it's a it's very interesting interesting game oh wow interrupting uh interrupting moment here I was I had just recorded a very long very awesome little dialogue well not dialogue uh thing explaining a bunch of stuff and then suddenly uh, Premiere Pro crashed and now I can't quite remember what has and hasn't been said. So uh, let me just pick up the pieces here. I'm sorry if it suddenly seems a bit disjointed here. So um, I'm sorry if I repeat myself. So yeah, Baldric is possessed by Pylair and that's partially um, so that he has somebody he can play off of and um, sort of fight against in the early story and it also prevents him from just going over to where the heroes are and squashing them before anything really takes place. Um, I also really, I really just like this idea of this transforming villain that um, Baldric over time, you know, slowly becomes less and less human because um, he has to play this game of um, trying to get Pylair out and not using the power Pylair gives him, but he needs to use that power to prevent anybody from taking the crown back from him. And also he just needs it to sort of squash the heroes who continuously thwart his plans. 
and the more he uses it, the more he pays in his youth and his humanity, so as the story goes on, he slowly transforms and looks much more lich-like. Um, I believe I said this, but just in case I didn't, um, he can't remove the crown, He's uh, it's, uh, it's stuck on him, and that was... Um, uh, Pylair tricked him to put the crown on, and it, he didn't fully lie, uh, he does give Baldric all the power he promised, but if Baldric uses too much of the power, then basically he's, there's not going to be enough of him left to fight Pylair from stealing his body. Now here I'm uh, just kind of playing around trying to find uh, a look that I like for the decay that's on Baldric, and this is just more artistic than literal. Um, later on, when I actually go back and explore Baldric um, as a character and actually properly do concept art of him, I'll, I'll figure out how I want this to look and how the patterning will progress over time, but for now I just wanted something that looked cool, that kind of had this new concept of the, the decay, because previous previous art of Baldric was, um, all, was all done before this sort of visual decay was happening. Um, at some point somebody suggested to me it would look really cool if um, if uh, Baldric really looked decayed at you know after a certain point in the story, which no longer happens, um, but uh, you know I, that that comment always stuck with me. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, you're right. It would look absolutely cool if he was slowly getting taken over. And to be honest, I don't think it would affect his face until until later on. But um, yeah, no, you know, this is uh, basically just going to be a little portrait um, for his character document just so I know that, you know, oh, there's Baldrix, I can just tell at a glance because it'll have a little portrait of him there, so, yeah. And here I am now moving on to inking. Uh, some of this inking was uh, easier to do than uh, other parts. Um, inking can be fun, but it's a little bit tedious working with a screenless tablet. Um, you know, you just kind of have to guess, and there's always this constant turning. So I do apologize if the, the constant turning does make you guys feel a little little sick. I'm kind of... I had to um, find a gentle uh, medium between speed and, um, and also just kind of making sure you guys weren't nauseous. So I hope uh, this sort of speed level works for you guys. Uh, when I speed this sort of stuff up for TikTok, it's, it's kind of just a... Uh, <laughs> a, a mess of, uh, it looks like my art's going through a washing machine. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, every time, every time I work on Baldrick here, I realize I don't really draw many beards, and I'm not really sure how to draw beards in my style. I mean, I know how to draw beards, you know, if you just ask me to draw a beard, I can do that, but in terms of beards and the kind of beards and how my style is, I think I can, you know, it'll be something I explore later on. Honestly, any sort of hair in general is something I need to improve on because I, my hairstyles are very similar and they sort of just lack a, a certain believability to them, even though they're cartoons, and that's something I'll be working on one day in the future, on top of everything else that I'm working on here. Now this is an interesting new feature right here, this sort of eye in the crown was something that was never there until I started drawing this, uh, this portrait and uh, some of the uh, sketches um, in the previous episode, and I liked the idea that, um, that Pylair might have an actual eye, you know, something that he can look through, so the, so the audience kind of gets the idea that, you know, Pylair is the crown, and the crown has a little bit of animation to it, and it's in opposition to Baldric. And uh, in animation, it's always good to have some kind of visual representation as opposed to just, um, you know, this character, this, this voice in Baldrick's head doesn't, wouldn't, would be kind of a waste to do in animation. Whereas, you know, if, if, if the crown kind of moves, if the fingers of the crown can kind of flex and that's all Pylair, then Pylair can at least emote a bit. And we can see some of the arguments that these two characters have as their similar but not quite similar goals come into conflict. And uh, when nobody's looking, you know, they can kind of have these sort of arguments in, uh, in a way that's not just, um, you know, Pylair, or sorry, Baldrick looking in a mirror and arguing with himself, or, you know, this sort of phantom figure that's just kind of there, but only Baldrick can see talking to him. Um, I do like um, the element 
that it adds in that all other characters aren't quite sure what's going on with Baldrick. Uh, is he crazy? Is there actually something there he's talking to? Nobody quite knows, and uh, he's, he's pretty good about hiding it, but as the story progresses, he cares less and less, um, especially when he, he starts looking worse and worse. So here I'm just quickly kind of adjusting um, his shoulders. I didn't plan on making this a bust, and I, I don't really know what his clothes are doing there. It's not really important. I just wanted something extra pointy at the shoulders. And those shoulders are way too small, but it, it's all about the face here, really. And uh, now I'm just doing some, some quick adjusts, and then we'll be uh, kind of moving on to color. Um, I wasn't quite happy with sort of the structure of the crown, but I just kind of accepted it as it was. Um, I hadn't really drawn and warmed up and done my proportions and stuff when uh, before doing this and I feel like it, it shows in, in kind of how wonky some of these proportions are and I'm now thinking oh maybe I'll have to, to go back and do more gestures and, and stuff before I, I dive into my characters um, but that's that's kind of something um, for another day it's kind of a struggle of time like if you only have three hours in a week to draw and you know before you sit down to draw you have to do a warm-up and say a warm-up takes 20 minutes well you know if you do an hour session three times a week that means you're actually only drawing you know 40 minutes times three so yeah it's uh you know as an artist it's always a struggle time is kind of the kind of the element that uh, you you struggle against Now this episode is going to be kind of long, it's going to be over 20 minutes, unless something changes. Um, let me know guys if you prefer episodes to be long like this, or if you if you prefer the more um, uh, roughly 14 to, to 18 minute episode length. I tend to prefer that more because um, the artwork tends to move faster, it's not as boring. Also the audio is a lot easier to do, I can sit down and do, you know, um, four episodes in, in a little over an hour and my voice doesn't burn out um, but when I start doing things in batches and and the episodes are 25 minutes each my voice kind of suffers by the end of it and I don't really have much of an option for um, doing smaller more batches um, just kind of works better with my schedule to do to do um, you know more episodes a few times or you know a couple times a month than uh, you know, two episodes a, a week, especially long ones. I mean, really, when it comes to recording audio, there's no way around it. If the, the length of the video is the length that I'm going to be speaking for, so uh, yeah. Well, that's just a that's just a thing. That's just part of uh, whoa, a little bit of bleed out with uh, Baldrick's hair there. I guess I didn't ink that part too well. That's kind of um, kind of a thing when you have this many lines going on, is it's kind of hard when you're zoomed in to really know what line is what. I mean, there's sort of a little intersect intersecting point where there's his scarred flesh, his regular flesh, his eyebrow, the crown, and when you're really zoomed in, you know, it's kind of hard to, to know what's what and whether the lines have been properly connected or not. Now this next bit here is me trying to figure out what kind of color I want his um, shoulder shoulder clothing to be. Shoulder clothing. Um, and I think I spent way too much time on this, to be honest, in hindsight, because it really doesn't matter. I want people to focus on the face. But I was kind of pulling stuff from, from the last piece of artwork I did of him, which was woefully years ago, unfortunately. Um, and trying to make it look good, and yeah, I struggle with this this for uh, for a little bit. Um, I don't really give up. I do kind of find a solution, um, and it does kind of work. And I, I'm glad I didn't go with 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 that. The, the yellow there is a little too much. Kind of actually reminds me of like a, a space captain in a way. Like his outfit's kind of that retro uh, space space captain person in a way. This, this is a little better. I, I think this is kind of what I went with. Um, yeah, and I always find this part quite therapeutic, just kind of the, the flat coloring is, is quite nice, you know, you just kind of have to know what colors are good to pick and then lay them in. It's quite, quite fun, a lot funner than the actual shading of things, because with shading then, you know, you have to get in there and, you know, render the form. And um, with my style, it can be a little hard because I often just will, will throw a shade layer over everything. And certain colors look better over other things, um, and so you know it might look really good how the shirt, you know, the shirt's shaded, but then the collar might might suck. 
Um, and I'm still kind of struggling with uh, how, to, how to fix that without it taking a million years to shade every layer. Here, for some reason, I got really artsy and I don't know why. I try not to do this with my cartoon stuff, but I grabbed kind of an artsy brush and I started painting in this sort of graying. And it works, it works perfectly fine, but um, I'm always worried that uh, I'll, I'll fall back on this sort of phase um, where basically what happened was I would draw cartoons, but then I would color them way too realistically. And I don't think it looked great. I think I think everybody was kind of going through that in the, in the early to mid 2000s. I think that was a thing kind of with uh, Photoshop and, you know, um, there was always this like gradient, you know, um, effect, you know, there wasn't much solidness to everything. It was all soft and, and, uh, and yeah, here I am just painting in that, that eye of Pylair. <laughs> I have to admit guys, I'm really not used to the length of this episode. I was about to I was about to say, oh, I should probably start signing off now. It's uh, hitting that, uh, what, 16-minute mark, and which is about where my, my episodes usually go. Here, I'm just now shading the crown, and I, I honestly had no idea what color it should be. I mean, you know, white? Bones are white, right? I mean, that, that kind of makes sense. And then I thought, well, what if it kind of glows in between? You know, like those little, little um, bits there could just be glowing pink. I don't know why, but his pink is kind of his, his magic color, kind of a pink-purple. It kind of works, but uh, then I was looking at this and I didn't like it, so I made it dark, which sort of worked, but then his hair is dark, so then it just kind of gets, you know, faded in, and then I, here you're going to see me struggle and, and constantly try and paint and come up with something new, and again I'm going to get painterly, and I, I, I don't know what was up with me. I, I must have had some kind of yearning to to get a little bit more painterly which is unusual for me I really am not a painterly person at all like I don't it's not even a thing I, I do it's just something that every now and then I just start doing it to my cartoons which maybe I should should draw something that I can uh, paint but yeah and at this point I was kind of like ah oh, man I, I don't know how am I gonna make this work it's just it's not really working and I think I was fussing around with it too much to be honest And now I'm just kind of adjusting other colors and, and stuff. You can see I was trying to find a good skin color there, and then I was um, trying to flatten out um, flatten out some of the, uh, the layers there. Um, yeah, so I continued to struggle with the crown. I took a break, walked some dogs, I came back, and then I started fiddling around with some other stuff. And I kind of just decided to go with a solid color, at least for the time being, and then I would come back and, and uh, change it. Um, one of the things I did in uh, in waiting is, as you can see here, I'm kind of at changing the line art color just to do a real quick glow effect. And I think it worked. I, I like it. Here I'm going to fuss around with that eyeball. I was in a very fussy mood. I don't know why. I just wanted to fuss around with stuff, which is very unusual. Um, usually I'm very good about just, you know, getting in there, making the art quick, and then getting out. And yeah, I mean, it's good to fuss with your art and... I think this is opening my eyes up to the fact that I probably wouldn't mind doing some some kind of fussy art, you know, kind of like a painting or something. Uh, very unusual. Normally I'm not in the mood for that, but yeah. And uh, here then I started doing colored lines, and I like the look of colored lines stuff, um, but because my uh, line art tends to be bolder, I can't achieve most people's effects in the same way that they do. They often will just change the line art um, layer style to uh, another mode, or they'll just um, they'll just kind of set the opacity lower. Um, and I find if I want that a really nice looking colored line effect, I have to go in there and manually color over each line. Uh, so like the skin will have to be a different color than the eyebrows, and the crown will have to be a different color. And it's tedious and time consuming and sometimes it's not quite obvious what line needs to be what and I have to be very careful because um, like for example if I did the eyelid versus the uh, the eyelash I'd have to go in there and very carefully make sure that not one iota of the eyeball area uh, became the color of the skin because that instantly looks weird and then having to find what tones work and then after you do it uh, if you haven't done it on a separate layer and you're like oh this you know i need to make this darker then you have to do it all over again and i find it takes up about as much time as a uh, flat layer like putting flat color to a character and i 
it you know I'm sure it adds something but I don't feel like it adds enough for me to spend that extra time at it um, I'm gonna look at some ways that I might be able to get that colored line look without all that effort um, the only way I've found to do it so far is to pre-plan my inking and then you know only ink the flesh with um, you know on this one layer and then only ink the eyeball on this one layer but that doesn't quite work for me because there's always one line that is ambiguous what it should be uh, and then I have you know seven or eight line art layers and then I have to still uh, make a master layer to fill in the work and then I have to put the line art back in and it's just a kind of a big headache and you know maybe in the future I'll, I'll figure it out but for the time being I kind of do it fast and dirty I try and find uh, a dark color um, and then just throw that over everything and sometimes I do it sometimes I don't for a character as dark as Baldrick I don't think I did um, just because there's not much I can't go much darker than the purple of the crown uh, but characters that are very light and very much the same kind of tone it's very easy to do um, characters like Tristan there you can see Tristan sort of peeking through behind Baldrick she's hard to do it for because she's got warm golds and then also cool blues and there's not really one color you can throw over all of that that's gonna work uh, she looks better if you know the gold is a, a light brown and the blue is kind of a dark navy blue and her hair is kind of a darker color than her skin uh, her portrait was one of the ones I did with lined, uh, colored lined art, and after that I kind of got fed up with it. Um, yeah, random little tangent there for you guys, but hey, it filled up, filled up some time. I hope you guys do, uh, do enjoy these occasional longer episodes, even though, um, it makes me a little bit hoarse afterwards, and I still got some, some more episodes to film, but hey, I, I do enjoy this. Um, happy to have taken a, a bit of a break when I did, though, because, uh, YouTube's fun. But I, I, I don't think I can do it every every single week like I was doing. Anyways, guys, we're kind of nearly done here. This is sort of what Baldrick's going to look like. Now I'm just kind of fiddling. Once again, I'm fiddling around trying to add highlights and stuff, which I don't always do. But in this instance, I'm kind of glad I did. I, I kind of went in with a little bit of extra detail kind of, you know, around the scarring of the face, you know, I added a little bit more soft shading and, you know, the crown and, and stuff, everything. I, I gave it a little bit more consideration than I normally like to. Now I'm trying to add kind of a glowing behind the eye because I want it to feel very magical and also kind of ominous. And, uh, yeah, quite, I really like that eye. Uh, I'll probably make this into a sticker at some point, although I'm not entirely sure if it'll be a sticker I sell. It might just be, I might just make um, stickers for for myself, um, at least for the time being. We'll we'll see if things pick up. I mean, the economy's kind of kind of not doing so well right now. Unless by the time this video goes out, um, things have rapidly changed. Um, yeah, we'll we'll see. I mean, I I like having. Um, uh, stickers of my own characters and stuff so nothing wrong with that there but if you guys want a sticker of this uh, let me know and I'll uh, I'll uh, get get on that a lot faster than I probably will if it's just me anyways guys uh, like comment and subscribe if you enjoyed this and I will see you guys in the next episode which is probably gonna be anatomy stuff so hey if you've been missing anatomy stay tuned for that otherwise I'm going to wrap up here and then I'm going to throw you guys a little little image of the final, final thing here. And uh, yeah, have a good evening.